sorry for the delay. Good morning, everyone. Let's we'll start our finance committee. Uh, public comment, I don't see any, so we'll move right into our first our business items, finance, and action items with purchases. Yeah, we uh, included purchasing agenda um, for this month. And if you uh, move it forward, it'll go to the board at their first meeting in April, which with spring break doesn't happen until April 18th. But a couple instructional things there and, and uh, some billing on site uh, matters through Ken's, Ken's group. So I don't think anyone has any questions on anything. I did want to comment on the building in site. Uh, it's listed under sinking fund. Uh, the Cherry Street Health Clinic, it's really there for information and for your approval as a project. It's fully funded through Cherry Street uh, Health Services. Um, I just want to make that clear that it's not GPS funding. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any comments, questions? Uh, we have been over this. I am an employee of Cherry Health. Uh, I don't do um, mm, site-based uh, clinics, and I uh, don't have to abstain from voting, um, but just to that out mm -hmm. that there are uh, I there is no pressure at all for me to approve or not approve these uh, sites can I have a motion so moved. Good boy. all in favor aye aye all opposed same sign uh, passes we can move on to Looks like uh, any uh, February financial statements. I don't uh, yeah, the, yeah, all the information uh, is included in your packet. Obviously, I, uh, on the financial dashboard, the one-page summary. Let me uh, want to point out that the middle column, the annual budget, has been updated with the amendment one that was approved last month. Um, so, in terms of where we stand year to date, you know, really we're we're tracking. Um, according to what we had expected to track, uh, comparable with, with prior years. And um, at this point, things are, are moving along appropriately for fiscal year 16. And really, our, our focus continues to be on, as we, in the guts of the budget process for 17, and, and we're working through that. So if anybody has any questions, anything with financials, I'd be happy to answer for them. Anyone have anything? Yeah. One issue. Um, I guess just for clarity, on the uh, change in fund balance, um, what yes. is that attributable to? Pardon me? What is it attributable to? Well, it's it, <laughs> during the course of any particular year, it's usually it's a matter of the fact that we get most of our revenue early in the year. You know, there's summer tax collection, so all our taxes are in revenue. A chunk of it is front loaded, whereas the expenses are coming more gradually throughout the year. So. We run a pretty, a pretty uh, healthy excess fund balance until about the last month of the fiscal year when all our expenses get in. So that, that's really just, it's really a timing issue, really a timing. Again, we still think we're going to track about a, as you see there, about a, almost a break even um, in the current year. But because we get most of our tax revenue up front uh, throughout the year, it looks like we're in really good shape. <laughs> so. Uh, without doing the percentages. Since you have the year to date and then the annual, I have to do the, you know, percentage of where we are. But um, your sense is that it, we're very close to what we had budgeted, or we at this had? point, no, at this point, at this point, yeah, yeah. You know, generally, uh, as you may recall, we we obviously look at it again, and we'll look at it again as we get close to the year. So, if we need to make a second adjustment or amendment, so that our we come out at the end of the year, um, the ultimate final budget, if it's amended, needs to be as close as we think we're going to get to. So uh, we generally bring that second budget amendment, if we have one, in May. So it's it's there in time and place as the end of the fiscal year. But right now, things are tracking according to schedule, yes. And this 
Uh, well, it's not exactly the. Is this calculation now the percent of annual revenues? That's the our old board policy <laughs> way of doing things. No, right? that's that that's yeah. actually was the up until and I, I saw a few emails that had gone mm -hmm. through. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the old. That's the actual. Um, what was the early warning computation, which mm -hmm. has now been changed. I can talk about that uh, mm -hmm. under uh, policy item two there. But mm -hmm. so that's under the old old early warning, which was which was <coughs> an assigned fund balance divided by total general fund revenue. Mm -hmm. That was the old way. But, okay, so we'll bring that up uh, later and then next meeting, of course, this will reflect. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, process-wise, oh, I'm sure we'll get to it in terms of our planning. You mentioned the revenue sharing meeting. It's not great, uh, great. Okay, and we have some budgeting discussions about that. Yeah. Quick. Okay, let's continue. Do you can warm safe and dry. Warm safe and dry. Um, just to recap from last year, which would be 1415. We have one item left of some ornamental masonry and stocking. It'll arrive in the next month. We'll determine when it's best to put on. It may wait till after school's off, depending on how much disturbance there will be. But that's the last thing remaining, and that then everything from the previous year will be closed out. For this year, we've started uh, work on the Ottawa pool dehumidification system. The pool will go down after spring break, and be down for the summer. We'll make sure the other two pools are open for our, so we have access to two locations. Uh, it's similar to what we did at Union. It's a large project. Um, these pools are nearly 50 years old, and so th this is. Um, it's something that we had to do. Much better. All those vegetables. If you've been in the pools, they get very humid in there, and if that okay. isn't controlled, mm -hmm. there's a significant chance of mold and other damage. To them. Mm -hmm. Um, the other one that will project that will start soon and it's weather dependent is the parking expansion at GRPS University on Fuller. Some of the groups that have been using that have well exceeded our capacity, so we are expanding there. Uh, we have we'll bring a couple other projects. One was on the purchasing agenda for the heating controls for this campus. And then um, Coval is moving along. That's a combination of warm, safe, and dry and bond funds. Mm -hmm. It's well underway. Uh, we've been by. It's fenced off. We are the foundations for the two additions mm -hmm. for the classroom and gym are poured. Walls are starting to go up. The interior has been gutted, and they're starting to put it back together. Pardon if I missed it in the minutes, but did do you guys see plans for it, Coval? Did any of us see? <coughs> I just love that quite a while ago. Yeah, okay. I'll go back and find it. I'm sure we, at some point we did. Mm -hmm. And then the other project that's going on, and we'll create a bond category here also, is um, the fourth floor at the Van Andel Museum. That work has been started to be ready for the 6th and 7th and potentially 8th graders at the Van Andel site for next fall. Uh, that's technically through the museum, but we are directly involved in all phases. So who is managing then the, the contractor for uh, the museum? You said it's primarily through the museum, well, so it's sort the, of uncoordinated. The, the museum's facilities director, Tom Bantle, okay. does day-to-day -day management, okay. but we're in contact, myself and Tom, several times a week on mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Anything else? And then policy. Let's see. Oh. <coughs> 
I see here. Oh, sustain, the sustain, <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Sustainability. Yes. Sustainability. Yep. Um, nothing new to report. Mm -hmm. um, we are working on the recycle brief for next month. Right. And we'll have that to present. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything you have questions on, Kristen is here and can answer. Okay, great. Yeah. Did anyone have any questions regarding sustainability? I just, I just that, I so I'm new to yes. here, so yes. just yeah. be patient with me if I'm Jump doing on. Yeah, I just wondered, is there to some, what kind of assessment is um, done for, I mean, who manages assessment, whether implementation is happening? I see my, my little <coughs> anecdotal dip ins to the schools, which is not data worthy. It seems like it's very uneven in terms of practices and things, but. Mm -hmm. for, for recycle, that's true. Yeah. And that will come out in our report, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it will sh uh, that's one of the goals of, of Kristen and the sustainability program is to get those on a functioning level in each school. There is a, a, a very broad range of how they operate. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to operate, and they operate on some level um, everywhere, but certainly not to the extent we'd like to see. Part of what we're looking at is what role should operations play, and we want to increase that. We, we also want to make sure that we have a, a staff champion in each building yeah. from that end that, that, that keeps sense. it functioning. Yeah. From the operations end. Wonderful. Good. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that next month. All right. Um, so we'll move on now. How's school aid? Yeah, um, <clears throat> since we met last, um, last month the, the governor had released his FY 16-17 budget and the House chimed in, um, <clears throat> gosh, a week and a half ago and the Senate, Senate chimed in last Monday. And so included in your, in your, um, materials are summaries of both the Senate and the House school aid proposals. Senate, you got, or the governor was included in last month's uh, materials. I, probably the good news is, is that in terms of total funding and foundation allowance increase, they're all the same. Um, a 2X formula, uh, anywhere from $60 to $120 per student in the foundation increase. That would get us up to the 7511 amount per student. As I mentioned before, it's based on our current count, extra couple million dollars in foundation revenue under that scenario. Um, I went back as a, a comment Ms. Falb made, Dr. Falb made, I think a work session. Um, the last year we had gotten over 7500 was in 2010. We're at 7546, and then there were some cuts a few years after that. So uh, we're not quite where we were six, seven years ago. Um, but as we know, we've talked about this before, our, our costs certainly have increased the last number of years. So um, that's a good thing. Um, one, of the, one of the minor differences is in the pupil count computation. Um, governor had a 50-50 blend. Uh, house went to a 15 85 15 percent prior October 85 percent current and the governor went to a or I'm sorry the Senate went to a 25 percent February count prior February count and 75 percent current um, I just got an analysis I think Friday or Thursday from ISD and on a countywide basis the house's count proposal which is 15% of prior October, 85% of current October is most beneficial for the county on an overall basis. It actually is most beneficial to GRPS um, under the current, if that was in place right now, that would result in about another additional $172,000 to us by going to the proposed house count. So um, again, very, very positive in the fact that they're all pretty similar. That The other big difference, the Senate did not include any uh, trust fund dollars to fund Detroit public schools issues. 
Uh, that still is unresolved. Uh, there was a stopgap funding that got through last week to get provide some cash for Detroit so they can continue operations through the school the current school year. But the long term fix is still very much up in um, you know flux at this point in time in terms of of how that's ultimately going to be resolved. Uh, it's not likely there'll be a lot of movement in terms of going to any kind of conference committee to work on any differences until after the revenue estimating conference, which is, is mid is mid May. So, but because they're so similar, um, I, I would guess it'd be a pretty pretty quick process to get there, and I don't see any significant danger of us seeing any, any cuts because they're all so very very similar. So that, that that's good news for us. Um, most of the other major items between the three chambers are, are pretty similar too. And so that that bodes well for us um, going in, into next year, although we could always use use more dollars. Uh, the other item that interestingly came to light after we met in closed session last Monday was this whole early warning. And I think I'd shared before we that that the Treasurer was looking at this fund balance calculation again. Again, the only the only metric that's actually in the law is the fund balance computation. Now, practically, the Treasury can and does look at other aspects of determining financial distress for a district. But if a district gets below this 5% measurement, then they for sure have to be looked at by the Treasury. How that 5% is computed was left up to Treasury. And they initially, as I've said before, took the unassigned fund balance divided by all general fund revenue, both grant revenue and found unrestricted revenue. Uh, MSBO has been in discussions with Treasury for, I think, most of the last four or five months trying to get some clarification on that. And uh, I, it came out last week, and I confirmed it with my caddy at ISD. I wanted to make sure that, in fact, this is what's happened. It did, it done, it did come through Treasury that they have changed that computation based on discussions with MSBO. And that 5% for now, and I understand that Treasury can do what they want and change it. For now, that computation is very similar to what the current board policy is. The only difference is the current board policy is unrestricted expenditures, total fund balance divided by unrestricted expenditures. expenditures. The new early warning computation, computation is, is total fund balance divided by unrestricted revenue. So frankly, from our perspective, this is the most advantageous computation for us as we look at the fund balance situation. Um, you may recall that under the prior computation, we were projecting to be somewhere in the range of 5.5%. And with the new computation now, it, it could be over 7%. So it does gives a little more breathing room in terms of that computation. So that, again, that was just breaking news late last week. And, mm -hmm. and Mike did confirm that it did come through a communication from Treasury. And so it appears that that is what's in place right now. And, um, and we'll work with that at this point in time. So. We had discussed beginning of the year of uh, potentially changing the, the board policy to, to more accurately reflect the early warning. We may still want to do that. But the change will be, it won't, sounds like it won't be as significant as it, as it maybe would have been under the old scenario type thing. So um, <laughs> we still have challenges, obviously, in the budgeting process, but it certainly gives us a little more breathing room in, in terms of uh, the fund balance computation. So that's, that's what's going on there. So. And that's really issue, really the issue with with uh, what's going on in Lansing, and and um, uh, I had an opportunity on Friday actually through the other board that I sit sit on. We had a legislative lunch, so all our West Michigan um, senators and and represent many of them representatives were at this lunch, and even though it was about mental health, I did chat beforehand about about the school issues, and and um, uh, you know they. Our guys obviously have been very supportive of, of funding for schools and continue to be, and and they also acknowledge that it, you know, truly this this Detroit issue is is um, it's going to be difficult, but um, they believe they can get it resolved 
at some point here in the next few months. So questions, comments? I just want one point of clarification before I let Dr. Phelps. A mic just for the recorded um, comments. Mike is the assistant superintendent Harrington of um, the Haggerty. Ken Haggerty, yeah, yes. Of, uh, of the ISD. Thank you, yeah, So yeah, I just thank wanted you. to yeah, put thank you. We're not just following some yeah, random mics. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> yeah, and I got it. That's a good point. After <laughs> Mike, I heard it from a few other sources too, but didn't know whether, where you were at with that. Um, so as you pointed out, it's the best. Uh, it's the best budget, I mean, it's the best uh, school aid funding we've had in a number of years. And um, since the, the House and Senate proposals are very similar to the governor's, then I would expect you'd be in pretty good shape. You're not going to have to make major adjustments with the tentative budget you probably already put together based on the governor's proposal. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we're, we're, our plan is, is to, you know, get the 16, 17, budget with I mean you're right on the revenue side we'll 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 present it you know we'll get it to you in, in May and we'll lay out the assumptions in place but um, you know I, I if I look at the monthly revenue projections because the, the Treasury does produce those I mean I, it doesn't appear there's going to be any any major revenue challenges come May I mean, they'll look at it for sure to finalize things, but I don't. We don't see a lot of. I haven't seen at least on a month-to-month -month basis a lot of things dropping off. I mean, the, the, the one challenge that we continue to have is is with the low gas prices. The sales tax collections on gas are down because the prices are are down. Um, the tax credits that are coming to fruition now from aren't as bad as we once thought. So that's, that's providing some relief, and the economy still is, is humming along here in Michigan. So I would hope, come the May conference, that there's no big revenue uh, issues and, um, and the budgets, the three budgets that are out right now would pretty much would fall in that line there with 120 bucks per, per student. So per I realize increase. our expenses, uh, for various reasons, continue to increase. So are you expecting significant cuts next, going into next year, given um, what, now what we know from what we're going to be getting from the state? Um, yeah, I mean, as we, as we get through, went through our budget means with the buildings, there's, you know, there's, still, there's still some cuts we're going to need to make. There's no question about that. Um, and what is the uh, range of those cuts? Uh, as I told you the other night, probably somewhere in the range of Two and a half, three million dollars stand now. So since those are fairly significant, it seems like it would be um, it would be important in April to get a sense of where those are and get a general yeah. sense of the budget. Since we could well update our projection model if, if that's you're asking and bring it to the April meeting, and give you a better idea. It gives some more. It gives us also some more time as we work through the, the details of getting things in place. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, what I, have, I mean, 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 I don't remind, I am fairly careful about reading the minutes, and so I was a little bit surprised that the, that the cuts were that large, hmm. and um, hmm. having some sense of where, you know, you're looking to be taking those, and you know, getting hmm. just the ballpark of yeah, what, where one, we're at. What, one of the challenges, one of the challenges next year, you may recall, is, is, we have to go to 180 days, and that's really an unfunded mandate. There's no really additional dollars, and uh, there are costs obviously being open five extra days. I mean, no, there's no increase in the educational hours, and, but uh, we still got to open school buildings. We got to transport students. We got to feed students. All those five extra days, it's going to cost us some money that you know funding isn't really there. <laughs> As I say, I just, I just said we're struggling to get back where we were six and seven years ago. So we get these unfunded mandates. That's what it makes it challenging. In addition to to other um, cost increases, and we're looking at too. As we open, you know, new high school at, at Span Frost, Span Museum School, those kinds of things. So, and again, that's that. You know, that's that's also based on a on a fairly. 
uh, constant enrollment. You know, we're, we're not projecting at this point any significant increases, for that matter, decreases in the enrollments. We're hoping we stay about steady uh, at this point. So trying to be, remain conservative from that pr perspective, too. So to some extent, since we're board members and we're not, you know, tracking all this stuff as carefully as you are, I mean, we need some high-level stuff. So in some sense, it, you know, since the governor's proposal has been out for a while, and now the House and the Senate have aligned, it would be really helpful to have the enrollment projections and you know, what that budget looks like, where, you know, where possible cuts will be coming from, what the administration's proposal for those cuts are. And it would be, be great to get that. We're in a position of um, making decisions regarding contract negotiations. So it would be helpful to have kind of a high-level breakdown for clarity for everybody on the board. And we yeah, can do and the that. 180 days is not new either. Mm -hmm. That's so. That's no, no, it's it's, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, you had mentioned we're getting back to where we were, and and still it doesn't account for inflation. So we're much further behind, just for the the, the big record right. that even though they claim we're. We could say we're back to sort of where we were a few years ago. We're still nowhere near where we should be, right. uh, even to account for cost of Yeah, and, we, and you know, the other, uh, the other dynamic from where we were six, seven years ago is, as I just said, at the end of or in fiscal year 16, 17, we will have, I believe, six or seven more days than we had to have back then, mm -hmm. and an additional 30 instructional hours we were back then. So. Um, those are significant cost increases in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. But excellent. Thank you. But Dr. Paul, does anyone else have anything to I'm wondering whether mm -hmm. um, that should be even given to the, at the board, the full board, that first. The April 18th? Yeah. yeah that would be our, Where, where's uh, your next finance committee meeting? It's every fourth Monday of the month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Or if there's a work session on the 11th. It's for you and Dr. Baker to discuss. Any feelings? Uh, it really would be left up to, uh, to you, Madam Chair. We'd like to see it first here. Mm -hmm. um, but we definitely can provide something to the full board. Well. So mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, I think a work session April 11th, if we can turn it around that quickly. Um, Yes. Yes. There's a lot yes. of assumptions yes. that are already given and known and that you guys have been working on. Uh, I think that would be most beneficial to us as a board and a district to have that information at a work group. April 11th. Right. Yeah, we will, like I said, we'll up, update our most recent projection model. It's tough to sit in this yeah, chair yeah. because you're holding a lot of responsibility and, um, you know, it's, you feel it and, and, and it's difficult because you don't have the expertise that the administration has to kind of make high-level decisions and um, you want to be tracking it as, as well as you can with a limited expertise that you have. So we're dependent on you Understand. to communicate mm -hmm. to us in a timely fashion so that we can ask clarifying questions and we can have a sense that we're fulfilling our fiduciary responsibility. Absolutely, I understand. Great. Anything else? Wonderful. Here we go. Uh, that was the school aid summary, fiscal report, Anything else you want to add? I think you did a nice job already of summarizing. I guess as I sit here and think, and I, I probably didn't, I didn't for sure give this body an update, but um, um, you know, we closed on the bonds on March 16th, which means the money's in the bank. So uh, that's that's all in place, and, and we'll move forward now with, as we have been to to uh, that first tranche to. Uh, do we had promised the taxpayers we would do in terms of updating our facilities and stuff like that. So a lot of work ahead of us still. But uh, 
went well. The whole closing process went well, and and uh, so we're money's there. Great. Very much. Excellent. Anything else, anyone? Just a, yeah. a small comment that yeah. uh, I noticed we were using the uh, local uh, preference policy that's being applied on several of the contractors. I think that's good. We're tracking that in terms of um, how many local contractors we use and what percentage we're making in advancing that uh, <coughs> that presence. Um, well, we we haven't tracked for any purpose. But we are going back through and seeing where it applies. And as part of the bond, we have a group that's addressing is our policy acceptable, okay, as it is, and okay, or should be modified as we go into the bond. We'll bring back appropriate recommendations if it needs to change. But yes, we are starting to track. And just, just a comment on our local policy. We do not rely on the contractor solely to apply for it. Uh, we check every contractor that bids, check their address, and if it applies, we will apply it for them and let them know. And that, that helps, especially some of the smaller contractors who may not be aware or don't have the time to address some of those things. So we've made it work. It, it's a simple process for us, and it's very easy for us to to make sure everyone's getting the advantage. I guess I asked the question because six months down the road, I'd like to be able to say hey, we increased it by 10% or 20% or 5%, whatever it comes out to. And then we see that that uh, growth. We can, we'll go back through our, our warm, safe, and dry. We can pull up the summary. Thank you. Anything else? Great. Well, means adjourned. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Paul. Yeah.